What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, as always. I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Well, the good news is we can move on from NFL trades. That's it. It's done. No more talking about that until the off season. You cannot trade anybody. So all those fools out there that'll be saying trade Dak, trade Dak, trade Dak. You can't trade Dak. Not until the off season. At the soonest. Oh, I forgot. He's got a no trade clause. Yeah, that's a lot of the idiots out there that think that they know what's actually going on. That are just repeating the crap that they hear from the talking heads. The Dallas Cowboys did not trade for anybody. It was not from a lack of trying. They had some players that they targeted. And who knows? We'll probably get them in a couple of years because that's the way it usually works with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, Patrick Sertan didn't get traded. They did not trade him. Um, the price was too high. They realized we can't live without him. We heard that the Cowboys were interested in him. Jalen Johnson. Hmm. We were interested in him. He was actually able to make some calls. In the end, he's staying with the Bears, who also brought in Montez Sweat, which is kind of a surprise because I was like, you're going to trade a great player and then you're going to try and trade for another one? I, it's like, why don't you, are, are you rebuilding? What are you doing here? What are you doing? So he didn't go anywhere. Derrick Henry. Apparently, there was actually a deal in place. I don't know if it was with the Cowboys or not for Derrick Henry, but ownership vetoed it because they wanted to keep him there. So the players that we heard that the Cowboys were interested in, the team said, no dice. No, we're not trading them. So there's that. And this was actually, surprisingly, anticlimactic for a trade day. Um, final. There were only five trades that were made today, of course, none for the Cowboys. You actually have to look if you're a Cowboys or an Eagle fan and say the Giants and Washington both got weaker uh, trading away talent. Leonard Williams from the, uh, the Giants being traded away. Um, of course, Chase Young and Montez Sweat from the Commanders. Both teams are pretty much looking to rebuild. Not mad about that at all. Not mad at all. So it looks like it is a two-team race here, uh, and this is Eagles Cowboys Hate Week. Um, we do have some news, according to Michael Gelkin, the Dallas Cowboys have lost a tight end. That's correct; they have lost practice squad tight end Eric uh, Schubert um, to the Texans to their 53-man roster. So, shout out to them going from the practice squad to a active roster. Um, and then guard uh, Dakota Shipley rejoined the practice squad. Shipley spent the last regular season on, on uh, uh, PS, on practice squad. But um, the team waived him in a move before the playoffs. He was with the Colts ending a season, but he is back now. So that's where we are as far as early moves. Uh, the team, of course, gets back on the practice field tomorrow. And um, we are... Actually, two teams that are in two different directions, I would actually say. The Cowboys, um, going into the game last week, were about as healthy as they've been all year, with the exception of Tyron Smith was not playing. We'll see if Tyron Smith, the big guy, is playing this week. Um, I'm betting that he will. You know, my thought was last week they kind of said he could go, but they just opted on having him rest for this game because this game is huge. The Eagles, on the other hand, they're kind of beat up, and I'm not celebrating this. This is just a fact. Jalen Carter, we'll see uh, how he is tomorrow. Um, I know he was supposed to get an MRI yesterday. I hadn't heard back on how he is. And I have some questions personally with Jalen Hurts. You know, the, of course, the talking heads and the, the, the team itself is, oh, he's fine. There's no big deal or anything. But here's where it gets to be kind of a mystery where I have to ask some questions. They say that he's been dealing with a bone, bone bruise for four weeks. In four weeks, um, he's been throwing the ball incredibly. He's been throwing incredible. Has not changed that at all. He is a real warrior, as every NFL player is. You go through serious pain playing the NFL. 
Um, I have to give him credit because if his knee is messed up as bad as we saw him limping and he was still throwing the ball and getting it to A.J. Browns, shout out to him. But my question is, if he was injured four weeks ago, you didn't really see much signs of that. I will say the Sunday before, I remember in the first half of the game saying to Game Time Brian as we were live streaming, I said, something's wrong with that leg. It was, you know, it, it, most people might not even notice, but I said something's wrong with his leg. And this is before it hadn't been on any injury reports and we hadn't heard anything about it. Second half of the game, he's got a brace on. And then they said last week, oh, it's fine. You know, it wasn't even listed on the injury report, which is kind of cray cray because he was wearing a knee brace in the game last week and you could see him visibly limping. So if this is nothing to worry about, and it's happened four weeks ago, the first two weeks, you didn't see signs of it. The third week, you kind of, it was visibly, at least visible to me, and then a knee brace. And then this past week, he was gimpy. You could physically see him limping. You could see him elevating off of the ground when he threw the ball and not planting his leg. And so if it's nothing to worry about, then why does it seem to be getting more and more severe each week? And that's a big question that I have. And, you know, when you're playing um, the Cowboys with that defense, if the Cowboys can get up early and make them one dimensional and get an opportunity to turn the dogs loose on them. And he's not as mobile as usual. Ooh, that's not a good thing. That may be a little advantage, definitely, for the Cowboys if he is not mobile, because that's a lot of their game. You know, when you think about the tush push, when you think about his running ability, if you can take that away from them, that will help tremendously. So um, I'm curious to see if he's listed on the injury report or not this week. This is where the rubber is going to meet the road. And I can guarantee that the Cowboys. You know, they smell blood in the water and they will be going after Jalen Hurts. Man, I can't believe that tomorrow already is Wednesday. They get on the practice field. Half the week is gone. And we're almost halfway to the Eagles versus the Cowboys. All right, good people. You are up to date. The Cowboys, of course, feel good about the team that they have and the players that they have and think that they have enough. That remains to be seen. Peace. Grocery store, I used to actually swallow it, pause, but, you know. Oh, Joe, you pack things. I used to pack and swallow. I used to do a lot of stuff. Dude, that should be your, like, intro. Yeah. You know? Your intro. Well, <laughs> this.